So our next exercise, we're actually going to do machine applique. Applique is one of my true loves about quilting. Uh, so here I have a sample, I did, I've done a leaf, and I've done a variety of stitches around it. So you're probably wondering, you've got all these beautiful stitches on your machine, what can you use? Well, I'm going to show you some of the different decorative stitches we use for stitching down our applique. Important to use is that you need to use the proper foot. This is called a monogramming foot or the end foot that came with your machine. This is the J foot, which is our standard foot. What is the difference? The difference is underneath. The monogramming foot actually has a channel in here. So what happens is it rides over top of your applique stitches. So it just nicely glides over it. If you use the J foot, your foot is not seated properly and it will actually teeter-totter on top of your applique stitches. Always use the monogramming foot so because it has that beautiful channel in there. So I'm going to pop on my foot. So on my machine, I've actually put some decorative threads on. This is a sulky. Decorative threads are typically a 40 weight or lower. So the thicker the thread, because you want your applique stitches to show. So we typically always use a lower weight. Also with applique, we must always have stabilizer on the back. You need something to support the stitches. If you've ever done applique before and you have puckers, that's because you've put no stabilizer behind it. So one of the things I recommend to my students is as you're doing applique, write down what your settings are. So again, I've done, this is a blanket stitch. So I've used, this as the stitch number. Here is the width, so that's the depth of the bite. Here's my length and tension and you write it down. So this is something you want to keep in your workbook. So when you go to do applique, you can say, oh, I want that stitch, right? Well, here's how I have to configure my machine. Now this was done on the Brother Luminaire. So of course, the tension is going to be slightly different than this machine. So whatever is your primary machine, you're going to practice with this and write it down. So when you go to do machine applique, you can just dial in all these numbers and off you go. So our sample today is I have a couple of leaves. So I have a fat leaf and I call my skinny leaf. So of course we need stabilizer behind it. Stabilizer doesn't have a grain line like fabric does, so it can always sit this way. Doesn't really matter as long as you're completely covering where your stitches will be on the back. Some people will do a little basting just to keep it. You can do pins or we can go back and use our embroidery tape just to tape it on. So let's just go ahead and use this tape. One there, one there, okay, so we're going to do this one first, we'll put this to the side. So now what we want to do is we want to select a stitch that we're going to use. Typical machine applique is a blanket stitch. So let's go ahead and look at our blanket stitch up on our menu here. So if we look underneath here, this is where the beginning of our most frequently used decorative stitches are. Now any of these will look absolutely beautiful in one of your embroidery threads. So here we have under menu two, stitch number three is this blanket stitch. And you notice that the straight line is on the right. And these are, I call them the bites, it's where it goes perpendicular to the line 
And this brother actually has both ways so that I can have the line on the left side and the bites to the right. So for the first time, we're gonna pick the standard old-fashioned blanket stitch. So let's go to menu two, stitch three. Number two. And then number three. <clears throat> now this will say the J foot, but remember we have to use our monogramming foot. So th what this is gonna do is go straight stitch, then do a bite to the left, back, straight stitch, bite. And what we wanna do is we wanna have the straight stitch right along the edge of our fabric. So the straight stitch will be here and the bite will be into the green leaf. Now when you start applicating, don't start at a point. You wanna start a little bit up and then we're gonna go around and you're gonna go slowly and we're gonna go around this curve, pivot and then go back. So we may have to adjust the amount of our bite because remember, these are all the defaults. So we're going to play with our defaults as we go around the leaf. So if I look at my needle, I've lined up my needle right with the edge of the green fabric. Let's go ahead and take a stitch. So a nice bite. It's going to go back. Bite. Continue forward. Bite. Let's go one more. So if we can see that, my bite is a little on the big side, although some people you might be pleased with the results of that. So let's make our bite a little smaller. So foot down, let's go into our menu. So my width is at a 3.5. Let's go down to three and let's stitch that out. So it's always best to go down in increments. So let's stitch a bit. Now I'm keeping that straight stitch right on the edge. Okay, let's go back, foot up. It's just a bit smaller. Just, I mean, these are by millimeters, so that's half a millimeter. Like I said, you may like that, so you would just continue on. But I want mine a bit smaller, so let's adjust it again. Let's go 2.5. Okay, and let's go ahead and stitch. <coughs> Now that's just doing a little bite. So now as I'm stitching, I'm gradually turning my little block so that the straight stitch stays right on the edge of the fabric. So let's take a look at that. Ooh, I like that stitch. It's just a little bite compared to my big bite at the beginning. So I would write this down with a Sharpie, what my stitch number was, what the length was, and what the width was. So I'm gonna continue down to the point here, and I'm gonna show you how to pivot. Applique is my most favorite type of quilt. I like cutting out the little objects, whether they're flowers, leaves, houses, people, sticking them on and stitching around them. So let's go down to the edge. So it'll slow down because we're getting to that point. Point there. So it actually right at that point. Now I can come forward. Sometimes it's actually a good idea to try to elongate the point on your leaf. So I'm gonna finish this stitch off. I'm gonna select a different one. So the blanket stitch is very classic when you're doing applique, but keep in mind you have all these beautiful 
stitches that we can select. So if we go back up to our menu, my needle is up. So now I can go ahead and change to a different stitch. So we have all of these in the number two menu, three. Let's go over to six, because six has a lot of amazing little ones. We have one, I'll call this my chicken feet. So this is menu six, stitch six, which is very cute. These have little flowers at it, on it. Number 14. So keep in mind, we have a raw edge here. So this is going to be encasing the raw edge. That might be nice on the middle of the leaf for the veining. But let's go ahead. I'm going to go to the sixth menu, stitch number six. So let's hit our menu. Yes, I want to cancel it. So that's fine. So let's go to our sixth menu. And I want the sixth one. I call it my chicken feet. Go. So now it's actually telling me to have in the monogram foot, but I already have it on. So let's go ahead and stitch this. Now keep in mind, <clears throat> the middle of the stitch is right where the opening in the foot is. So let's see what that is. Let's see what that looks like. No, oh, that's pretty darn big. So let's go up to the top here and we're going to do an adjustment. So if I turn that here, you see how that raw edge is poking out. I mean, if you're doing a wall hanging and it's perfectly acceptable, but if you're doing a bed quilt or something that's going to be washed, you need to encase that seam. So let's make these a little smaller. We want smaller chicken feet. Let's go into our adjustment menu. So notice that all of our adjustments are blanked out. It tells me I cannot adjust this one. That's a really good heads up that this is the size you get. Okay, I think I'll have to pick a different stitch now. So let's arrow over to see what else we like. Let's see. So there's another type of blanket stitch. It looks like it has a double stitch and then a single bite. Ooh, 0609 looks pretty cool. Let's try that one. So another way of telling you whether you can adjust a stitch is obviously I'm looking here and these are all blanked out. So obviously I cannot adjust this stitch. But this one's actually quite nice. Oh, that one looks really sharp and it encases that raw edge. So this would be a very nice decorative stitch on an applique. Let's just go around the curve here and we're going to pick another decorative stitch. <clears throat> so I'm going to just slow it down. I'm keeping the center of the leaf in the split in that foot. And I'm not looking at my needle. I'm looking in the middle of my foot. Let's get to the center. Go one more stitch. Let's go needle up. Needle down, I'm back in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna pick one more stitch. Let's arrow through. See, and you always wonder what you use all these decorative stitches for, right? Okay. Ooh. Very fancy. Well, let's see how this one stitches out. Again, my width length are blanked out, so this is the stitch I get. Okay, so let's go a bit. I'm keeping the middle. Ooh, look at this. My machine is stitching sideways. It's very cool. Nice curly cue. Mm. 
nice decorative stitch, right? Very pretty, right? But then, you know, if you had a wall hanging, this would be perfectly acceptable for your applique. But if you're going to wash it, you want to make sure you encase that raw edge. That's a very pretty stitch. Okay, let's go back to one. We're just going to finish this. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to our boring old blanket stitch. So if I put my needle up, I'm going to need to reposition, which is perfectly acceptable to do. I'll bite. And we'll come down to our corner. So this blanket stitch is the one with the double bite, where my very first one was a single bite. Bite, bite. Okay, get it. And it goes back. And forward. <coughs> and you're going to match up with your previous one. And here's where you want to use your tacking stitch. Now I can use my scissors. Yeah. So we've finished our machine applique. It's a great way of using all our decorative stitches. So some people will actually put an extra stitch in here to elongate the leaf. That's actually a hand applique trick to do that. I do like this stitch. So I'm going to show you underneath. And here's something really important is you'll notice the top stitches are coming underneath and the bobbin stitch is shorter. When you make an applique stitch, you want it to come around and then the bobbin thread is shorter. It's very, very important. So this in itself is the way it should be. Another reason that you need to use stabilizer. And then when you're all done, you just rip the stabilizer off. Usually it's always tear away, you just rip it off, and then it becomes part of your quilt block.